Deep in the annals of criminal history, there exists a collection of unsolved cases, each with a unique and eerie quality. The individuals captured in these police sketches are known only by their aliases. Their true identities remain a mystery, as do the details of their crimes. But one thing is certain, these three cases will send chills down your spine. Number one, the Minnesota Brinks heist. The FBI is on the hunt for a ruthless and heavily armed gang of robbers who have been targeting armored cars and making up with millions of dollars in hard currency, dubbed Big Joe, Little Joe, and Roadrunner by investigators. These criminals have been carrying out their raids with almost military precision and have managed to evade capture for years. On April 18th, 1989, the gang struck in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, where they stole nearly $1 million in a heist that was described as commando-like by investigators. The robbers used a fake bomb as a delaying tactic, and they were able to make a clean getaway in stolen vehicles that were later found abandoned and wiped clean of evidence. One year later, the gang struck again in Burnsville, Minnesota, just 10 miles from the scene of the previous robbery. This time, they made off with an undisclosed amount of cash after firing shots at the Brinks guard and escaping on foot. Despite a massive manhunt, the gang was able to evade capture once again. The FBI believes that the robbers could be living anywhere in the United States and that there are at least four members of the gang. Authorities have managed to make composites of three of them, but so far, none of them have been identified or located. The FBI is urging anyone with information about the robbers or their whereabouts to come forward, as the hunt for these criminals continues. The public is warned to be vigilant and report any suspicious activities to the authorities. The robbers are considered to be heavily armed and dangerous and should not be approached. The FBI is offering a significant reward for information leading to the capture and conviction of the robbers. As the investigation continues, one thing is clear. The Big Joe, Little Joe, and Roadrunner Gang is a formidable criminal organization that has eluded the FBI for years. It remains to be seen when and where they will strike next. But one thing is certain, they will stop at nothing to get their hands on more money. The FBI and local law enforcement are working around the clock to bring these criminals to justice before they can strike again. Number two, the Boston Rapist. Boston police are on the hunt for a man who has been robbing and sexually assaulting employees at strip malls in the area. He is known as the Strip Mall Rapist and has been linked to nine different incidents, with five of them resulting in rape. The first known case occurred on December 16th, 1989 at a small store in downtown Boston. The perpetrator sexually assaulted an employee at the store. A few weeks later, on Christmas Eve, the assailant entered a medical clinic in a mall in Braintree, a town south of Boston. He engaged in small talk with a nurse at the front desk and then excused himself to use a nearby phone. When he returned, he went behind the reception area and pulled out a gun, threatening the nurse and herding her and two other employees into one room. He forced a female lab technician to tape the hands of the doctor and the nurse behind their backs before stealing $1,600 from the clinic's cash box and then brutally raping the lab technician. On the third day after the initial attack, the perpetrator carried out another attack at a woman's clothing store located on Route 9 within a shopping mall in Framingham. He entered the store, pretending to be looking for a gift for his girlfriend and asking for assistance from the store manager. When she got close to him, he pulled out a gun, forced her and an 18-year-old employee to the back of the store, and then raped both of them. The perpetrator is described as being in his mid-30s, around 5 foot 11, and over 200 pounds with a pot belly. He has reddish brown or black hair, sometimes wears glasses and a mustache, but never any jewelry. He is always clean and may use obsession cologne for men. He is believed to be intelligent, articulate, and calm, and has specialized knowledge about electronic gadgets and the retail clothing industry. He tries to blend in and appears to target younger females at stores with only one or two employees working. The victims of these attacks have been severely traumatized, with some still experiencing nightmares and difficulty sleeping. The police have set up a joint task force with officers from eight different police forces and are urging anyone with information to come forward to help identify and capture the perpetrator. Number three, the milk carton bandit. It was a typical morning at the Bank of America branch in Ontario California. The sun was shining, the birds were chirping, and the employees were going about their daily routines. But at 10 a.m., everything changed. A stranger pulled up to the bank in a car, carrying a gym bag and a plastic milk carton. He seemed unassuming enough, 
but something about him made the employees uneasy. They watched as he walked into the building, the milk carton in hand. Little did they know, this stranger was the infamous milk carton bandit, a master thief with a penchant for using unusual methods to pull off his heists, and today, he was about to strike again. The milk carton bandit walked into the bank carrying his milk carton, naturally. He made his way to the door of the bank box depository area, and using the carton, he reached over the three-quarter high door and unlocked it from the inside. This gave him access to the vault area, where he knew a large sum of money had been delivered by an armored car just minutes before. Two employees were in the vault at the time, and the milk carton bandit ordered them both to lie down on the floor. He stuffed as much money as he could into his gym bag. The workers observed that the robber was calm and seemed to have prior knowledge of the contents and layout of the vault. He seemed to know exactly how much money had been delivered and where it was located. The milk carton bandit was so quick and efficient that no one else in the bank knew that the robbery was taking place. It was clear that he had done much intelligence collection on the particular bank prior to the robbery, such as knowing when bank employees began and ended work, as well as being familiar with an office environment. The way he carried out the robbery without showing signs of nervousness or excitement indicated that he had previous experience in criminal activities related to theft or robbery. The milk carton bandit made his escape, stealing approximately half a million dollars during the commission of his crime. The police were called, but by the time they arrived, the milk carton bandit was long gone. They composed a sketch of the man, but have not been able to positively identify him. The suspect was reported to be a man in his early 30s, standing at 6 feet 4 inches tall and weighing 160 pounds, with a full beard that was described as greyish blonde in colour. To date, the milk carton bandit remains a national fugitive, his whereabouts unknown. Some say he's living a life of luxury on a tropical island, while others believe he's hiding in plain sight, waiting for his next opportunity to strike. But one thing is certain, this master thief will go down in history as one of the most elusive and enigmatic criminals of all time. Three unsolved cases, three police sketches, and one question remains. Who are these shadowy figures, all known by their aliases, all with a modus operandi that suggests a certain level of expertise? all with a striking attention to detail. But as the years pass and the trail grows cold, one can't help but wonder if these criminals will ever be caught. Are they still out there, planning their next heist, or have they vanished into the abyss of anonymity? Only time will tell.